the difference between a free society and a, an authoritarian type of government is the people in a free society must retain the right to judge the law. Where they don't have the right to judge the law, you will have the authoritarian, the dictatorship type of government. In this nation, the judges, the congressmen, the president are not going to tell you that you have the right to judge the law. That's your job and mine is to reach our countrymen with that information. The fact that we have the right to judge the law. Another question, what is common law? There is considerable confusion about common law. There are two very well-defined kinds of common law. One is called English common law. The other is called Anglo-Saxon common law. And they are directly opposite of each other. If you will look in your volume one of your revised codes of the state of California, I believe every single state has the same clause. Volume one, right very nearly to the beginning of the book, you will see this. It will read like this. It will say, if a controversy arises not covered by the statutes of your state, you revert back to the English common law. The English common law says that the people are down here and that the government is free. The English common law says that the government has the authority. The Anglo-Saxon common law, that's where your grand juries and your trial juries came into being. The Anglo-Saxon common law says that the people, that they are sovereign and that the king or the government is subject to the people. Now that's quite a difference, isn't it? Remember I said there's only two kinds of government? You have government controlled by people or people controlled by government. That's the only kind. I don't care what kind of a label you put on it, democracy, Nazism, socialism, communism, or whatever. You see, it doesn't make any difference if you are, are, are executed by a bullet in the back of the head. It doesn't make one bit of difference to you. You're dead. It isn't going to make any difference whether that bullet says democracy. That's what happened to Vicki Weaver up in northern Idaho. That was a democracy. And her son, Sammy, shot in the back. That bullet said democracy on it. Those people down there in Waco, all those little kids, murdered. It had democracy written all over that atrocity. It could have had communist label on it. It doesn't make any difference. Waco happened because we the people lost control of our government. Common law. I talk about the laws of common sense. Every individual out there, if they have normal mental capacity, has it right between their heads, right between their ears, it's there. Why? Because your God creator put it there. Your mother at your mother's knee should have been teaching you the difference between right and wrong. They should be teaching you right from wrong in the schools, but that's why we have problems in our schools today because they say, oh, we can't teach these values. The government schools have to go. The laws of common sense those are laws that we have readily available and we function under those laws every day of our lives. Here's the one uh, about the district attorney fired the, the head of the grand jury and I've already touched on that. Here's one that's kind of close to my heart. How can your research into the improper ratification of the 16th Amendment gain judicial notice? 
It was in 1980, June of 1980. I was talking to the, on the phone late at night with a fellow up in Montana who had become very active because of our television specials. And we were talking and discussing things, and of course I was using, way back then, I was challenging audiences uh, to tell me one time where our tax-consuming public servants had told us the truth on any major story in this century. I recited that long list of lies many, many times, even on national television. We've been on satellite television before. They lied about Pearl Harbor, Korea, Vietnam, Social Security, energy shortage, Watergate, Kennedy assassination, and on and on and on. And this fellow says, you don't suppose they lied to us about the ratification of the 16th Amendment. That is the amendment that supposedly gave the Congress the power to lay a tax on our incomes. I said, Sam, we have to know from their track record we have to understand, we have to know that it is a fraud. He said, we better get the evidence. We better collect the research. We better research this. We better collect the evidence. We better get the legislative journals from the 48 states that we had in 1913. And so that was the birth of an ad hoc type of, of group of people that said, we're going to do research. We're going to collect the evidence of criminal activity by our public servants. And they started to gather up all of these legislative documents, the arguments, the debates, you should, I should say, and the votes of the various state legislatures. By the time I wrote my book, Born Again Republic, in 1981, we knew that the 16th Amendment had not been ratified. The evidence had not been completed until January of 83. And when I took it into federal court the first time in March of 83, they refused to accept it because they said it was not certified. So Mr. Bill Benson from South Holland uh, in the Chicago area, South Holland, Illinois, we went out, he went out and went to all of the 48 states. Judge Moody in federal court in June of 1980, I testified and he said, you've got to have a witness that will testify that he's gone to all the states and gathered all this information. They put up a bunch of hoops for us to jump through, and we jumped through every single one, and it cost us about a hundred grand to do it. But when Bill Benson completed the journey, the sojourn across the United States, we had over 17,000 certified documents. We put this book together, Volume 1, The Law That Never Was. Back there about 1987, every single congressman, every senator was given a copy of this book with their name gold embossed on the cover. This is a beautiful book. I'm not one bit ashamed of it, I'll tell you that. We are not going to get this evidence out here and make it work until, until we can get a grand jury in this country that will take this evidence and start indicting federal judges for violation of their oath. They're violating Title 18, Section 4, misprison of felony. They're violating it every day in this country. Bill completed that evidence in Christmas Eve of 1984. We had this book out in April of 1985. And we have been confronting the courts across this land, the U.S. attorneys and the federal judges, since that time, and at this point in time, I am absolutely convinced that every federal judge and U.S. attorney in this country is guilty of a felon, felony. It will not be corrected until we have our grand juries start investigating, researching, and then indicting these people for violations of the supreme law and the and the laws of our land. This is why we must inform our fellow Americans with the truth that I have brought to you at this time. Thank you, and go out and let's do the job.